Hello booktube! Today is March 31st and that means it's time for my March book haul. Um, this book haul is going to be large um, and immense. I have over 40 books I think and this is also the month in which I hit a thousand books and I will make a note of the specific book that was the 1000th book that I added to my collection. So normally when I do these book hauls, I do them in the order in which I acquired them. However, um, given how I organized uh, the books in my new acquisition shelf thing right behind me, um, I kind of lost track of what books came in when. And so instead of doing it in the order in which I picked them up or I got them since they were all online orders, um, I'm going to do the books by subject. So I'll start off with the poetry and then the fiction, history, and manga at the end. So let's get started with the poetry. And as I finish each section, I'll do a bit of a pyramid. So it'll be not so much a Steve Pyramid, but I guess a James City of books. So let's get going with the poetry. So the first nine books of poetry I picked up in uh, March are uh, from PUP, the, uh, from Princeton University Press. So PUP had a 75% off sale the last two weeks of February, from February 14th to the 28th. Um, midway through, I ordered nine volumes of poetry, pretty much most of the poetry they had, except for those volumes that uh, I couldn't get um, the sale price to work on um, the paperbacks. It was only the hardcovers that were on the sale. So I pretty much picked up the ones that were I could do but the paperbacks, and they were mostly under $4, which was great. Um, so over the past few months, I've been wanting to pick up more poetry. Um, since really the last uh, pup sidewise sell in I think September or August or September, um, I've been wanting to pick up more poetry, and I did pick up some works of poetry um, late last year, but I've wanted to pick up some more, like from LSU in their last sell or with the University of Chicago, which I'll get to um, once I finish up with the poetry or at the end of this book haul, if I have enough time to talk about what I want to get in the next few months. But anyway, let's get to the books I pick or the slim volumes of poetry I picked up from uh, Pup. Uh, first is The Ruined Elegance by Fiona C. Lorraine. Um, I had picked up her more recent collection, um, Green and Plural a few months ago and really liked it and was looking forward to reading her earlier collection. So quite happy to have this. I also picked up Set by Dora Malik, um, which sounds interesting. Um, Syllabus of Errors by Troy Jolimore. Love that cover. Um, a Glossary of Chickens by um, Gary J. Whitehead. Interesting cover. Um, Before Our Eyes, New and Selected Poems, 1975 to 2017 by Eleanor, Eleanor Wilner. Quite like this cover too. And I think her, that sounds interesting. Um, Radioactive Starlings by Myron Hardy. Um, I've been wanting to pick up this collection for quite a while and quite happy to have it. Scaffolding by Elena Rivera. Very rusting cover. And the poems sound interesting. I dipped in. Um, First Nights by Niall Campbell. And... The Two Yvonnes by Jessica Greenbaum. 
and from uh, Beecher's and Quinn, uh, the uh, used bookstore in Minneapolis, um, I picked up uh, three volumes of poetry uh, through a Libris. Um, I use a Libris, which is a online used bookstore aggregate site that a uh, number of used bookstores join to put up their stuff online, and Majors and Quinn is one of them. And one of my favorite uh, bookstores to use or to shop with. So I picked up Bridal by Amy Ming. Um, this is a collection that I've wanted for quite a while. I was intending on picking it up uh, during the last LSU um, sale, but instead I decided to go with uh, two works of history. But when I saw this on Nature's and Quinn, I decided to pick it up from there. And I'm quite looking forward to reading it. Also, love the cover. I also picked up uh, Prospects by Judith Hall, um, also from LSU. And One Summer Evening at the Falls by Peter Campion. This is Peter Campion's uh, most recent work. Um, I have his earlier collection, The Lions, which I love, and I'm looking forward to reading more of Peter Campion's work. Um, this is a part of the Phoenix Poets series out of the University of Chicago Press. And I'm kind of annoyed with myself because just maybe last week or so, yeah, it was last week, um, I got an email from the University of Chicago that they were having a sale on a number of poetry and fiction and uh, literary nonfiction and um, literary criticism uh, in association with the or because there's a I think a I don't quite remember what the association was but it's a um, an English professor associations having a having their yearly conference and uh, Chicago the University of Chicago does um, specific sales for conferences and stuff and this book was one of them and I'm like darn it could have picked it up from that but anyway I'll probably get some books with them in the next month or two so anyway oh thanks so needless to say I'm really looking forward to reading uh, one summer evening at the falls. So, this is my Tower of Poetry. Um, and I'll be reading these 12 volumes of poetry um, over the next week. Um, I have a poetry reading project that I'm going to start uh, tomorrow, and it'll run until I think the following Friday, if, although it might take a little bit longer and I'll be reading those 12 volumes of poetry as well as um, Omarose by Derek Walcott and a little more written on human by Gillian Conley. That's my plan. Um, so moving on to the fiction. Um, I had a bit of a uh, literary fiction kick <clears throat> uh, the past few months. Um, and this month was no exception. Um, I picked up quite a few uh, works of literary fiction. The first three are from the University of Chicago Press. Um, the University of Chicago Press has, at any given time, a number of sales on. Uh, these three books came from the reading catalog. Um, they also have their yearly big sale that's kind of come out the past few months that I'm meaning to get to, but Anyway, but this is from the reading catalog. Uh, first is, Here's a Game We Could Play by Jenny Bittner. This is a novel set in the mid-90s. It's about a young woman who wants to leave her small town in Pennsylvania, who and she can't, so she sort of creates an interior game with herself. I've dipped into this novel, and I quite like what I've read so far. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this, perhaps in June, and I do love this cover. It is an amazing cover. I also picked up, um, 
Lost You for the End of Days by Ian Stansel. This is a short story collection. And Further News of Defeat by Michael X. Wang, which is again a short story collection. I have in mind, I think at some point in the near future, to do a try a story tag. Um, there are sort of two uh, tags on BookTube in which uh, participants read either a chapter or a short story in a short story collection and sort of decide what book they will read or the order in which they will read uh, the novel or short story collection based on the impressions from the first chapter or first story and I kind of want to do that again it's been a while since I did something similar and that was before I was on a booktube um, anyway so the next few books I picked up from book depository in two orders the first order included Loaded by Christo Sulkas this is a gay Australian novel from the mid 90s about a young Greek Australian man who is coming to terms with sexuality and the novel takes place over the course of a day or a few days and I picked this up with the mind of participating in Aussie April one of the numerous uh, reading events that take place in April but I only have two works of Australian fiction so I'm going to try to beef up uh, my Australian literature and maybe next year I will participate in Aussie April at, in some capacity. I also picked up um, from that order uh, Somebody Loves You by Mona Arshi. Um, I picked this up largely because it was long listed for the Republic of Consciousness Prize and uh, seeing Eric uh, talk about it on his channel um, and the Republic of Consciousness Prize it just really got me into wanting to uh, collect a number of or to read a number of the long listed books from for the Republic of Consciousness Prize as well as um, the International Booker and the Women's Prize um, so um, Mona Arshi, uh, Somebody Loves You was long listed for the uh, Republic of Consciousness Prize um, the same is true of uh, the first book from the second order I did with Book Depository, and that is After the Sun by Jonas Eicke. Uh, this short story collection was long listed for the Republic of Consciousness Prize and is also long listed for the International Booker um, Prize. And I'm quite interested in reading this. I know a number of other booktubers have uh, read it and reviewed it and it the reviews are kind of mixed but I'm kind of excited and I do love this cover so we shall see what I make of it whenever I get around to reading it um, I also picked up Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Cuppersmith um, this novel is long listed for the Women's Prize um, and again um, seeing Eric and Simon and Louise and Jen and everybody else who's been talking about um, all of these book prizes um, that the long lists and the short lists are coming coming out or will be coming out it's got me excited to read these and this is a novel set in Vietnam in at least two timelines it's about uh, two young women who disappear and what happens since um, and I've heard some good things about this so I'm looking forward to it and I also picked up um, Girl Woman Other by Bernadine Evaristo uh, this novel won the Booker Prize in 2019 and was shortlisted for the Women's Prize and I've been wanting to pick this book up for a few years now so I'm quite happy to have it and I'm looking forward to reading it so this is the literary fiction pile or tower
And now we're kind of blocking off the history. I really should have um, organized these books a little bit better, but oh well. So the first six books of history I picked up in March was my second order with PUP. Again, uh, Princeton University Press had a 75% off sale of about 1,800 books. Um, and I decided to do two orders. One, about halfway through, um, I did nine volumes of poetry. And then the second order, the last day of February, um, in the last day of the cell, I ordered six books of history. So the first book is Europe Since 1989 by Philip um, Thayer. Uh, this is a history of Europe. Uh, from 1989, and I've, I'm really interested in the history of Europe uh, in the 20th century and the 21st century, so when I saw this, I had to have it, and I'm looking forward to reading it. I also picked up um, The Wind from the East. Uh, French Intellectuals, The Cultural Revolution and the Legacy of the 1960s by Richard Rowland. Um, I'm very interested in the history of Maoism, particularly um, Maoism as experienced in the West, in Western Europe, in America. And so when I saw this, I um, had to have it. I also picked up um, The Everlasting Empire, The Political Culture of Ancient China and Its Imperial Legacy by Yuri Pines. Um, I have a sweet tooth for Chinese history, particularly dynastic Chinese history. And when I saw this, I really wanted it. The next book is Emergency Chronicles, Indira Gandhi and Democracy's Turning Point by Gayan Prakash. Uh, this is a history of India uh, during the emergency. Um, and I picked this up because I'm, I don't have much in the way of Indian history and I'm really interested in this period. So quite happy to have it. Uh, the next two books are of Middle Eastern history. The first is, presenting, uh, is Preventing Palestine, a political history from Camp David to Oslo by Seth and Ziska. Um, and I picked this up largely because I loved um, The Hundred Years War on Palestine by Rashid Khalidi, and it got me really interested in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and quite interested to see how this book turns out. And finally, I picked up um, Making the Arab World, Nasser Khatib and the Clash that Shaped the Middle East by Fawaz A. Gurgis. Um, I have an interest in uh, the 20th century Middle East, and this book sounds incredibly fascinating. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. And to round out the... Um, history I picked up this month. I also picked up Legacy of Violence, A History of the British Empire by Carolyn Elkins. Uh, this came out this past Tuesday, and it's a history of the British Empire, which from what I've been able to glean is going to be a very brutal history. Um, and I decided to pick it up because it sounds interesting. Um, I'm interested in the British Empire. And, um, yeah. Although I was originally going to pick up a cookbook uh, that came out uh, Tuesday. But I decided to go ahead and pick this up instead. So, let's do the Tower of History. And now finally, let's get to the manga. 
the largest contingent of books in this book haul. So the first two volumes of manga or Tenko Ban of manga I picked up in March are from Subasa Reservoir Chronicle by Clamp. This is volume 21 and this is volume 25. Uh, Subasa Reservoir Chronicle is Clamp's big um, crossover manga. It's a story uh, which features a number of um, classic Clamp characters. It's about a young archaeologist named Siaran who is in love with uh, Princess Sakura. And one day during an archaeological dig, they discover a mysterious artifact that grievously wounds Sakura. Um, Siaran is sent along with Sakura to Earth to consult the space-time witch who tells him that in order to save Sakura he has to travel across uh, various dimensions um, to sort of collect uh, her memory and soul feathers to um, sort of restore her. Uh, joining Siaran are a samurai named Kurogane and a sorcerer named Faidi Flowerite and also Makona uh, being that can uh, travel different realities and so they go on a quest to rescue uh, to find uh, Sakura's feathers um, or soul shorts in the form of feathers. Um, so with these two volumes I now have four volumes of Subasa Reservoir Chronicle left to collect in these Del Rey editions. The problem is that these final four volumes are either hard to come by or insanely expensive. So that left me in a bind. Do I just wait until um, the four become available or bite the bullet and pay an exorbitant price tag for them? Or do I go with the omnibus editions. I decided to go with the omnibus editions. So I picked up the last three omnibuses of Subasa Reservoir Chronicle to round out the series. So this is volume eight that includes volume 22, which I'm missing, as well as 23 and 24, which I have. Also, I picked up volume nine, which includes volume 25, which I have, and 26, which I don't. And of course, volume 10, which includes volume 27 and 28, which I don't have. So I now officially have uh, Sebasa Reservoir Chronicle completely collected, which means I'm going to be able to do my plan uh, for May, which is to start the month of May with a massive uh, Subasa Reservoir Chronicle read in which I will read the entirety of Subasa Reservoir Chronicle in the first however long it takes me to finish Subasa in May. So quite happy to finally have it. And I don't know if I'm going to try to keep an eye out for the final four volumes from the Del Rey um, edition to kind of collect them or if I will just go ahead and backtrack and get the seven volumes of the omnibus um, to kind of kind of complete the series in a uniform way. The problem is that I think um, in the early 2000s and early 2010s, I guess the aughts and the early 10s, um, the manga that Kodansha publishes um, Del Rey through Del Rey Manga had the um, English language translation rights and the distribution rights. And then in the early 2010s, uh, Kodansha decided to pretty much do it themselves. So they started Kodansha Comics. Um, and instead of reprinting these individual volumes of Subasa Reservoir Chronicle like they did with Fairy Tale, which was in a publication at the time. Like, I think it was around the mid-teens for Fairy Tale. 
uh, what Kodansha did was just publish the Tinkerbon, I mean not the Tinkerbon, the Omnibus Editions. Um, so that's why the Omnibus Editions are actually still in print while the individual Tinkerbon are not. So anyway, that was interesting. I also picked up uh, four volumes of Fairy Tale, uh, volume 18. 19, 20, and 21. Um, Fairy Tale by Hiro Mashima is one of my favorite um, manga series. It's a story of a young uh, celestial spirit mage named Lucy who uh, one day meets a young fire dragon slayer named Natsu and his um, exceed cat uh, companion Happy, uh, who are members of Fairy Tale, and she joins um, Natsu and Happy in Fairy Tale, and they form the nucleus of um, what I don't know necessarily what the name is in universe, but in the fandom it's referred to as Team Natsu. Although I would think it would be more appropriate for it to be Team Urza because. Um, Urza is the highest ranking member of Fairy Tale in the team, which also includes uh, Grateful Buster and uh, eventually um, Wendy Marvell and her Exceed Cat companion, uh, Carla, as well as occasionally featuring uh, Yuvia or Juvia and um, Gajil. But anyway, so and then basically Team Nato goes on a number of adventures. And I just, I love the series. So I picked up these four volumes. Um, I also picked up five volumes of Eden's Zero, which is Hiro Mishima's newest series. Um, there's also a sequel series to Fairy Tale called Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest, which I haven't really been paying much attention to, which I need to once I finish collecting all of Fairy Tale. But I picked up volume three, volume four, volume five, volume six, and volume seven. So I'll get these up, um, yeah, probably I'll read these sometime in April. And it's the story of a young uh, girl, a young woman, named Rebecca, who is a VTuber, basically she's a YouTuber, um, who goes to a theme park planet and meets a young boy named Shiki, um, just as all of the robots on the planet are dying. And so they leave the planet and they go on adventures. And finally, from Book People, I picked up two volumes of manga, um, Tulaban Hanako-kun Volume 5, uh, this is uh, a new favorite of mine. It's a story of a young girl named Nini who goes to the most haunted high school and junior high in Japan. And she meets a ghost called um, Hanako San, and um, who's actually a boy rather than a traditional girl. And they go on adventures to kind of keep the other ghosts in the school uh, occupied. Love this series. Um, looking forward to finally picking up volume four, which is kind of in a needs to be reprinted. Sh should be coming up this month. So, looking forward to picking them up. <laughs> so, and I also picked up um, Noragami Stray God volume one by Adachi Toka, which is rather similar to Tolaban Hanako Kun, except that in this case it's a young god who's um, trying to make his way in the world. And I'll talk a bit more about this uh, Friday because I will be reading this today because uh, I don't have anything else. So I'll read that today. So this is the Manga Tower. So, yeah. Anyway, booktube. That was my March book haul. Um, I don't think my April book haul will be as immense as this is, particularly given the fact that I suspect I'm going to be spending the next hour or two um, 
putting these in the catalog and putting them on the shelf. So anyway, booktube, I think I'm being called. So I'm going to go ahead and sign up for now and I will see you tomorrow with weekly reads. So until then, booktube, thank you. Have a great afternoon and stay safe.